Karuna Center began 25 years ago with the idea that peace must be actively built with the people who are themselves affected by violent conflict in the League. Our first major project was in Bosnia, just two years after the Bosnian War. The dialogues and trainings we led among educators in the late 1990s built trust and shared skills for rebuilding their society across the conflict's painful ethnic divides. I reacted so emotionally because I didn't leave on my own free will. I was chased out. It was even harder for me when my parents were forced out. They were pushed onto a bus at gunpoint and their house was burned down. All I can say is that I'm very sorry about everything that happened. We were disorganized. How could I have managed to help anyone? Now, after Project Diacom, we have changed our way of thinking and have become much stronger. Maybe now we could think differently. God forbid if it should ever happen again. One of the great joys was um, witnessing them sing Bosnian songs together that they used to sing when they were all part of Yugoslavia. And sometimes they would weep because the songs touched them so deeply and brought back the memories of what they had lost. During the same time period, Karuna Center was invited to conduct nonviolence trainings among Rwandans living in a massive refugee camp just after the genocide against the Tutsi. Amazingly, when we returned a year later, 17 new centers for the study of nonviolence had been established in the camp. It was the beginning of a long journey accompanying the Rwandan people's courageous process of social healing, which we continue through the present day. As Karuna Center became more established, we developed long-term peace-building relationships with Palestinians and Israelis, and in Sri Lanka and Senegal. In Senegal, where the conflict in the Casamance region still simmers today, we worked with local leaders to form a new civil society peace-building network. Together, we were able to bring in leaders of the armed independence struggle as part of the conversation about peace. In 2006, we also began work in Nepal, just as the pro-democracy movement was calling for the end of a repressive monarchy and the end of a 10-year civil war. When the monarchy fell, we worked with civil society leaders to engage the most conflict-affected communities in sharing their ideas and needs for reconciliation and democracy. Using the process of dialogue, to bring women from both the sides who are affected by conflict from the state and from the Maoist in the area of uh, Rukum. We chose Rukum because this was one of the area from where the conflict started and uh, the women in the Rukum came from three different villages. From, some were from uh, very close, some were from uh, places where they had to walk about two or three days. At the end of the training, that was for three weeks, it was uh, so fulfilling to uh, learn that some of the participants who did not know what mediation was were so convinced, so motivated that they themselves started mediating in the community. When the Maoist party surprised the country by winning the first national election, we brought together a back-channel group of political party leaders to discuss the most contentious issues that stood in the way of forming a new constitution. Uh, is a very sensitive period. So people you know, tend to get fixed with their position. Karuna has been very successful you know, uh, in uh, trying to convince the CA members and other leaders that it's very important to hear what the other person, particularly your opponent, the more there is difficulty in understanding them, the more you need to hear them. 
Over the last two decades, Karuna Center has worked collaboratively with local partners to strengthen peace leadership and build community resilience in more than 30 countries around the world. Today, in many of the same areas where Karuna Center began, our collaborations have had a positive ripple effect. In some cases, the people we once mentored are now fostering new generations of peace builders. In Bosnia and Herzegovina today, we are working in partnership with a thriving peace building organization founded by a participant in our earliest dialogues. Together with three more Bosnian organizations, we are supporting youth to build community, end hate speech, and reach across the harsh ethnic divides that persist after the war. In Senegal, we are still drawing upon the networks forged during our work more than 10 years ago. In the past few years, we have supported hundreds of traditional priestesses and women of the sacred forest to gather together from villages in the heart of the conflict zone. They began a sacred process of reintegrating the combatants from rebel forces. In communities where we supported the peace leadership of these women, the combatants' raids on villages came to a standstill. When we partnered with the Sri Lankan organization Sarvadiya to engage religious leaders in interfaith dialogue and reconciliation after the brutal civil war, our participants in turn engaged more than 5,000 community members. The religious leaders formed interfaith councils for reconciliation and conflict prevention that continue to be active today with our support as communities cope with new cycles of violence. During our two-year program in Myanmar, we collaborated with three local organizations and engaged community leaders across religious divides at a time of escalating violence and persecution of ethnic minorities. We drew upon religious teachings about peace and facilitated careful dialogue and collaboration in deeply divided communities. Participants created interfaith projects in community spaces and countered the damaging spread of hate propaganda about Muslims and other minorities. We feel that out of the ashes of terrible circumstances, if you plug into people's hope and strong desire to build a better future, anything can happen. This is something we have witnessed powerfully through the three years of our Healing Our Communities program, a comprehensive collaboration with three Rwandan peacebuilding organizations. Through community-based trauma healing programs, joint problem solving, advocacy with government officials, and youth-led projects to build community in areas deeply affected by the genocide, we have strengthened the peace leadership of survivors, bystanders, and even former perpetrators alongside a new generation of youth. After the arrival of Healing and Rebuilding Our Communities in Yamasheke District, they trained us for three days, they gave us instruction, and helped us to realize that we were traumatized. We decided to ask for forgiveness from each other from the bottom of our hearts. Many of the perpetrators who had pretended to ask for forgiveness previously, they decided to apologize sincerely. Those who had forgiven because they felt there was no other option since they were living again with perpetrators. They also decided to forgive willingly from their hearts. Some of the Rwandan youth volunteers wrote a song called Youth Build a Paradise, which calls out each individual member of the group to appreciate them. Each of us has a vital contribution to make toward a more peaceful and sustainable future.